internal derailment, how we do it. A 70 years female patient operated case of CABG 15 days back for triple vessel disease. She was known case of diabetes on OHA and insulin. She was sick lady with heart rate 120 per minute, blood pressure 106 by 58 millimeter of mercury. She was tachypneic and respite rate was around 28 per minute. On auscultation, there were bilateral crepes, SP2 was 90. Yuko sharing EF 35% only. And now she was posted for sternal debridement by plastic surgeon. Routinely, we give general anesthesia for such patients or occasionally regional anesthesia. But patient was on antiplatelets, so there was no for original anesthesia. If given general anesthesia, chances of post-operative ventilator were very high. So, plastic surgeon asked me, why don't you try any block on this patient? So, I searched on YouTube, found a video, watched that, and gave a satisfactory sternal block. And what was that block? The, that block was transverse thoracic muscle facial plane block. Later on, uh, Dr. Deepak Borde suggested me a, a same block with less complication. That was spectro intercostal facial plane block. These are parasternal or anteromedial interfacial plane blocks. Local anesthetic deposited into tissue plane rather than around nerves. These blocks target the anterior cutaneous nerves, which are branches of intercostal nerves that emerges at multiple levels of lateral sternal border, giving sensory supply to skin, soft tissue, and sternum. So, primary mechanism is by conduction block of sensory afferents by local anesthetic. Effect on peripheral nociceptors by diffusion into surrounding muscles and fascia. Sternum, ribs, associated joints, connective tissue, are important sources of pain, are innervated by anterocutaneous nerve, a branch of intercostal nerve. So, what are indications? Sternotomy, sternal debridement, sternal fracture, medial rib fracture, medial coverage of breast surgery, role of parasternal blocks. When there is no for epidural or paravertebral block due to coagulation problems, when patient is on antiplatelets or anticoagulants, Otherwise, rescue technique for fed epidural or paravertebral blocks. Coming to the nerve supply of the sternum, sternum is supplied by sensory dermatomes T2 to T6 level, and upper part of the sternum is supplied by supraclavicular nerve and transverse cervical nerve, and lateral part of the intercostal nerves. Transverse view of sternum in relation with the muscles. This is transverse thoracic muscle. And this is internal intercostal muscle. In between lies internal memory vessels and anterocutaneous nerve. That pierces internal intercostal muscle and pectoralis major and supply to skin and sternum. This is sagittal view showing the same uh, muscles with uh, in relation to costal cartilage. These are two costal cartilages, uh, transverse thoracic muscle, internal intercostal muscle. And this is pectoralis major muscle. Position of patient is supine. A linear ultrasound transducer is used. Probe position just lateral to sternum, either parasagittal or in transverse position. Coming to blocks, transverse thoracic plane block, rather it is a deep block. We need to advance needle to the plane between pectoralis, plane between internal intercostal muscle and transverse thoracic muscle, targeting the neurovascular plane. Here we need to uh, see internal memory vessels to avoid injury pneumothorax by piercing the pleura. This is a transverse view. Probe is positioned lateral to the sternum in transverse position and needle is placed in line with the transducer. This is sono anatomy. This is pleura. These are memory vessels. This is transverse thoracic muscle and this is internal intercostal muscle. We need to advance needle in the plane between these two muscles. Let's come to the pectoral intercostal plane block, that is superficial block. 
we need to add one needle in plane to the probe into interfacial plane between pectoralis major and internal intercostal muscle. This is parasagittal view. Probe is placed parallel to the sternum and needle is passed in line with the transducer. This is sono anatomy. This is pectoralis major. This is internal intercostal muscle. These are rib shadows. This is pleura. This is transfer thoracic muscle. We need to advance needle through pectoralis major to this plane. Coming to the video. This is white glistening structure is pleura. These are rib shadows. This is internal intercostal muscle. This is pectoralis muscle. The needle is coming from this direction. And this is the plane between these two muscles. Now we are seeing the local anesthetic is being deposited between pectoralis major and internal intercostal muscle. Now we can see the plane separating in between pectoralis major and internal intercostal muscle. This is local anesthetic. Upper part of the sternum is supplied by branches of superficial cervical plexus. Those are transverse cervical nerve and supraclavicular nerve. This is diagrammatic picture of superficial cervical plexus. Nerves image, imaging posterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, what are the landmarks? Landmark is midpoint of sternocleidomastoid muscle. External jugular vein crosses sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is sternocleidomastoid muscle, linear probe, placed transversely on the sternocleidomastoid muscle and needle is plus in line to the probe. This is sono anatomy. This is sternocleidomastoid muscle. These are scalene muscles. Above scalene muscle lies pretracheal fascia and we need to deposit drug below sternocleidomastoid muscle around 5 ml on each side local anesthetic can be used we did almost 35 cases of sternal debridement out of which 15 cases were given general anesthesia 16 cases were given satisfactory pecto intercostal facial plane block one case was converted to general anesthesia after inadequate block three patients developed hypotension after four, 40 minutes they were treated with injection mefentin the hypotension might be due to the overdose uh, because th these patients were uh, post cabg with a low ejection fraction Finally, we give 20 uh, ml of local anesthetic on either side overdose for the local anesthetic what is my take home message parasternal blocks can safely be given for debridement of high risk post cabg patients but we need to consider the local anesthetic dose according to weight of the patient. If dose exceeds, you may consider the sensory dose for that patient. Special thanks to Deepak, Naina, Swati and Pooja. Thank you.